Hey everyone! When you learn rationality or critical thinking, usually what you learn is a set of cognitive biases, logical fallacies, um, sometimes structures of argument. Um, so you're learning about the anchoring effect, the focusing illusion, the sunk cost fallacy. You're learning how to recognize uh, an ad hominem attack or a non sequitur. Um, and that's great, uh, but it's, it's not useful at all in terms of making you a more rational person unless you accompany that with a genuine desire to know the truth about the world, um, to have an accurate model of how things really work. Um, and unless you want that more than you want to cling to a particular belief that you happen to like or be emotionally invested in, um, unless you want that more than you want to win a particular argument with a particular person. Um, so it, it's always kind of disappointed me that this sort of fundamental skill of rationality, which is the disposition to be rational, uh, the desire to have the truth, um, isn't discussed more when people are talking about and teaching rationality. Um, that said, it, it is difficult. Uh, we especially, it's especially difficult when you're in a debate with someone. So not only do you have like an attachment to your particular point of view, but you're in this situation that feels sort of like a battle and so your defenses are up. Um, and so over the years I've developed a few techniques that I've personally found useful in um, helping get myself in the mindset of, of reminding myself of, of what's actually true, which is that I, I want to have true beliefs overall much more than I want to win this particular argument with this particular person. So I'm going to share a few of these techniques with you in hopes that you will also find them useful. Um, the first is called Divorce Your Belief from Yourself. It's a visualization where essentially I picture the belief that I'm defending in that particular debate as existing sort of a few feet away from my body. So when the person I'm talking to attacks it, I can sort of picture the attack being directed at this thing that's not me. So it doesn't feel like a personal attack and I can kind of evaluate more objectively um, how the belief stands up to that particular attack. Um, second, just reframe the argument. Think of a disagreement as being a collaboration in which you're working together to try to figure out the truth about X, as opposed to um, an adversarial situation or, or a debate where one of you has to win. Um, thirdly, a tip from Eliezer Yudkowsky of LessWrong.com, uh, visualize being wrong. So before you try to examine the evidence against a particularly emotionally fraught belief, um, just visualize first, what would it look like? How would the world be if this belief were false? Or rather, how would I cope? Uh, what would it be like? And once you've sort of thought about like how you would react, um, how you would um, uh, respond if this belief of yours happened not to be true, um, and gotten sort of a little bit more used to the idea, then you're in a better frame of mind to more objectively consider the possibility that it might not be true, uh, or the evidence for that possibility. Um, fourthly, take the long view. Uh, think about conceding a point uh, if it's warranted, as putting credit in the bank in terms of your ability to convince other people of things in the future. So if people know that you're the sort of person who says, okay, that makes sense, um, I accept your argument, I'm convinced, then they know that in the future if you don't do that, it's not necessarily because you're just stubborn, it's because you haven't been convinced yet. Um, next, congratulate yourself on being objective, not on being right. So this, this is a technique to sort of redirect the very common and very human impulse to um, to need like ego validation, um, which is something we typically get from winning arguments or from uh, turning out to have been right all along, and taking that uh, need for validation and just redirecting it into um, the goal of, of being objective and being rational, so that you can pat yourself on the back and congratulate yourself on having evaluated uh, arguments as dispassionately and fairly as possible, instead of congratulating yourself on, yes, I was right all along. Um, sort of along similar lines in terms of like a stepping stone from less productive human impulses to more productive human impulses is redirecting your competitive instinct. So as I was saying earlier, it's really, I think it's much better in the long run to think of arguments as collaborations instead of as, um, as combat. But if you are inclined to think of arguments as combat, one way that you can redirect that impulse in a more productive way is to, uh, to think of the the, the duel, so to speak, as one in which you have one weapon, your opponent has another weapon, and maybe their weapon turns out to be more powerful than yours, but here's the nice part. You get to have the weapon at the end of the duel. You know, you get a copy of that more powerful weapon, and now you can use it in future duels to beat other people with their less powerful weapons. So, as I said, a uh, stepping stone on the way towards, uh, 
towards a, a more enlightened uh, approach to argumentation, but useful. Um, finally, uh, another technique that I've found useful is to, uh, when, you, when you're feeling negative affect towards the person you're uh, arguing with, like you're feeling frustrated or irritated or you know, defensive, hostile, um, take the words that you're hearing them say and just put those words mentally uh, in the mouth of someone you, you like and feel comfortable with and feel friendly towards. And, and then try to evaluate the arguments as, as if they were coming from someone who you like more. And I think uh, you'll, if you're anything like me, you'll find it much easier to consider them fairly than, uh, than you otherwise would.